So, I want to go through social network analysis, a topic we have not covered very much at all in lectures. Several of you have asked me about social network analysis and whether it's easy or not. So look, what is social network analysis? The very first thing is, let's take a look at what one looks like. Google Images is going to show me a list of multiple social networks. These are all the networks and how things interact and relate to each other. These are people that have relationships with each other and we can see here we've got um, I have no idea what that is, I know it's from Beth Cantor. It's relationships of people, we've got hubs, we've got links, we've got nodes. Social network analysis is a way of visualising the relationships between people and how they talk to each other. That one there is going to be from 9-11 and the social network analysis of the terrorists that were in that attack. Now, I talked about the tool Gephi to do this. And Gephi is a wonderful program and it's free and it's wonderful and terrific, but it's a bit complex. Okay? It really is something that you could spend a month of Sundays learning and never get anywhere. I found a somewhat better tool. Social Network Visualizer. Socknetv.sourceforge.net I'll put the link in the description. Social network analysis made easy and it actually is fairly straightforward. Download that and you've got yourself this social networking tool. Now, social network analysis consists of nodes and relationships. I add nodes and I add links. Now, my mother always said it was good if you're going to have a relationship it takes two to tango, so we've got one we've got two. Okay, now I'm going to add a link between one and enter the target node and this is just going to be a relationship of nodes. Okay, so one nose two and I'll add the reverse of that bring back bring back the relationship for one oh for goodness sake that's a link that it knows itself options add back my link create a new link target node is two Okay, and then I'll add in a link. It says two to one. Okay, so if I go zoom in there, you can see there are two little double headed arrows there. There's a relationship going from one to two and one going from two to one. One and two know each other. If I add another node, I will end up with a network of two people who know each other, one person who does not. If I display that and down over here in visualize, I have options to visualize this network. So this is a network of people. I'll put it onto the information centrality down here. And you can see one and two are in the middle, nothing to do with three. If I tell three, or if I document a relationship between three and say two, That's going to change somewhat. See how now we've got one, two, and three with two being in the center of that circle, okay, a circle of influence, if you like. One does not know three, but one can find three through two. So we'd, if we talk a seven degrees of Kevin Bacon type relationship, okay, one, two, three. I've added four, five, and six, and I'll add one more. Okay, now. If I say that three knows four and four knows five 
and five, no, six, and six, no, seven. I have the classic seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. It might be six, who can tell? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four is the midpoint. However, if I say that seven knows four, and apply that, okay, I get a much different social network. Okay? One can go to seven by hopping one to two to three to four to seven. That's how that relationship can go. Well, I haven't put the double-ended arrows in there. It doesn't actually affect this level of social network analysis. It would if I was doing something else. Now, those people might have a relationship with an object. So I could add another node. So the classic is, are they a member of a board? Okay. And I can display that on here. Change node shape to box. And I can show that that's a different sort of node. I don't want to talk about that in this example, but the classic scenario for an academic is who's on the journal boards, the editorial boards, and how many people know each other, who share that relationship. So they're a membership of a member of a board. So I could have the people, I can add the boards and put a relationship from the people to the boards they're on, and from that I can work out who is on the same boards and really the diversity in my discipline. It could be diversity in my organisation. Who knows who? Where do they come from? Did they all go to the same school? Did they work with each other on other projects? I've got a number of options. Now, what I'm looking at here is simply an adjacency matrix. What's an adjacency matrix, I hear you say? I'm glad you asked. If I go in and go to this export, and I export the adjacency matrix, And I give that a file name, adjacency. Dot, uh, I'll just call that um, relationships. Adj. I'll plunk that in there. So all that has done is just saved a matrix of who knows who. And I'll open that up with Notepad and look at that. Now remember, I said I had seven nodes, seven has one, two, three, four. So seven's got a relationship with four in there. Seven goes to four. And that's fine. However, if I, what it's missing is of course that seven doesn't have a relationship with six. It doesn't affect the social network analysis. It does affect my underlying data. You can create that matrix. So row one is node one, row two is node two three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to the bottom of the jar. That could be thousands long. Similarly, each column is node one, two, three, four, up to seven in this case, but it could be a thousand. So when you get the intersection of those, so in this point here, in row three, column two, there's a one. What that means is node three has a relationship with two. And if we go back to our little diagram, two, three has a relationship with two. If I add in the reciprocal of that relationship, so I tell it that two has a relationship with three, I've now got double arrows in there. If I export that again, relationships dot ADJ, overwrite it, that's okay, open this up, I'll reload it. Now watch it as I reload it. Right column, row three will have a different relationship now. So two has now got a relationship with one. Okay? Uh, two has a relationship with node three. So column three, row two shows that two has a relationship with three. Fine. Perfect. Perfect. And three, of course, has a relationship with four, which we know because we've got three moving to four. So if you've got data and you can create your data to look like that using Excel or you can download it from a data set, that's fine. 
put a one to show where there's a relationship, a zero where there is no relationship. And you can do a social network mapping of that. So that little network that I've got going on there, let's make it a little bit more complex. We'll say that we'll say that one also knows three. And we'll say that three knows one, just to be clear. So we've got double-headed arrows between 1, 2, and 3. How does that change my visualization? It just expanded it out a little bit. But now if I say 7 also knows 5, and 5 knows 7, and 7 knows 6, these are all the relationships I missed before, and 6 knows 4, And 406. And if I got everyone, no, I've got to put a 5 nose 4. And I've got to put a 4 nose 7. So now there's double arrows in all those teams there. I'll put this one here for 4 knowing 3. So now that's properly formed, the relationships go both ways. I'll apply my data visualization. And what you can see here is that three and four are more central to the networks. So I've got people here who know each other and one and two that know each other. Three and four are central to the network. But I can visualize this network in a couple of different ways. If I go up here, I can go to degree of centrality and so four is most central of all those networks. Two is on the periphery, one and six are on the periphery. Okay, five and six, five and seven and three are in a circle. So I could describe a team in that way. I'll get a similar thing if I go to influence. Closeness won't work because we're missing some data. So there's influence range. So that's okay. Similar sorts of arguments. Betweenness. Similar pattern, but its emphasis is somewhat different. There's a stress one, and there is, if you hover over them, you will see that you get a description, I think, of each one. Maybe not. Eccentricity, and this is just a way of visualizing what a network looks like power and information so because it's a small network those visualizations aren't going to change too much but you can see how you could work with that spring and better now this is going to pretend that those little nodes are planets and the vertices have a relationship as well and what it's trying to do is find an optimal visualization of that network so we can see that it's moving, moving, moving. It's going to give a similar result because this network has a connection between three and four and it's going to pivot around that. But it's another visualization. I can give these little labels. So I could say that this is Simon. This might be Mary. Give it a label. Okay, so I can that's my social network and that can there can be a number of things there Simon and Mary are people who bridge the divide they talk to each other they can talk between the teams they're the information conduit between Mary's team and Simon's team and vice versa there's also this other force directed model which is the Fruchtemann Rheingold which is probably very badly pronounced and you can see that that's moving around and it's trying to optimize the relationships between them. Again, can be quite complex. Um, or be much more informative if they're a complex relationship. And I can also really just view my adjacency matrix again. And if I had zeros and ones, I can see the relationships that are going on there. I'll stop that from calculating those things. Go back into view my adjacency matrix. And I could generate that from a data set that I created. It might be, um, what might it be? 
people who live in the same postcode, it might be cars registered in the same state or cars that are the same make and model, that sort of thing. So who drives what sort of car, what brand of car, I could do all of those things. Now, that's okay, that's good, but let's assume that that's all I wanted to do and I could run with that. I just apply that back to information quality. I can get a social network going on and I can interpret that. I can say that Simon is very central to all of this. So if we lost Simon, if this was a working team, if we lost Simon, either Simon or his role is going to be crucial to our future performance, for instance. Um, so think about that um, when people are working with each other I could create a social network analysis. You could go to people's LinkedIn skills, LinkedIn pages and see what their skills are and you could treat those as the basis of relationships. There's a number of ways I could code this up. But really that's just a very short introduction that I wanted to give you. And the only final thing is how do I get this into my darned assignment? Network, export, instead of an adjacency matrix, I do an image, give it the name picture, save it, image saved and I'm going to open that up in paintbrush and that's my picture up there preview I will just edit it up in paintbrush and voila I can pick up Simon and Mary there's my social network and if I'm really concerned I can get rid of that little label at the top. Using my elite photoshopping skills and save that. And I can insert that into my happy assignment. That's the end of that demonstration of social networking. It's a very simple tool social network visualizer sotnecv.sourceforge.net.au I hope that that gives you something to think about if not for this assignment for future presentations